This was originally a single piece of travertine stone, and it's unlikely that the quarry is in Egypt. It could be as far away as Turkey. And this is a different building made of giant slabs on the roof of Travertine. Look at the incredible straightness of this line. Unlikely that it could have been done by hand. And here you see a saw cut in granite, likely an ancient power saw. And look at the precision of all of these surfaces. This groove looks like it was done by a power router. And here is another example. Machine-like quality. This, on the other hand, is dynastic construction. You can see that the pillars are made of several pieces of stone. So what we find at Karnak is a dynastic construction around the core, which is several thousand years older, and shows signs of lost ancient technology. This is supposed to be the east-west line, but it's 23 and a half degrees off of true east and west. This gives us evidence that the original causeway here was constructed 12,000 years ago, prior to the Earth having its present axis of 23 and a half degrees off up and down. And here you see incredible weathering patterns that are not simply from wind and sand, but could have been scorching heat as the result of plasma ejection from the sun. And as well, here we have more saw marks. Had to have been done with a power saw of some kind, in granite, not a hand saw. There is a giant drill hole, and again, more evidence of incredible, what looks like heat damage to the surfaces. And once again, more of what looks like heat scorching rather than normal weathering. This is all over the area called the Holy of Holies, which is the ancient original center of Karnak, made long before dynastic times, and we believe at least 12,000 years ago. 
again, more what appears to be heat scorching. And here we have cracks that appear to again have been done by heat. So there is ample evidence at Karnak and other locations nearby that um, ancient structures were struck with possibly plasma ejection from the sun as theorized by Dr. Robert Schock in his latest book. He's also the man who was able to date the Sphinx at being much older than the dynastic Egyptians. So as we come to the end of the east-west axis, which is off by 23 and a half degrees, again we see scorching of the stone, both in the granite and also in the travertine. The travertine has eroded in a different way because the crystal size is much larger. It looks like pieces literally exploded off of the surface. And two ancient drill holes once again. Okay, we're here with geologist Susan Moore, and Susan is going to describe the phenomenon that happened to this stone, which is a granite-like stone, I believe. These stones in this little area, they've been a puzzlement to us for numerous years. We keep trying to figure out what went wrong with these, why they're like it. And if you could look at the rock here, you can see that the inner portion of the rock is a coarser crystalline size and the outer side seems to have a finer crystalline crust. This is a fairly wide crust, this is a narrower crust. Uh, you know, we just don't know why it's doing this. We actually see the same thing in a, in a pillar, a door pillar over here. And you know, unless we could analyze these things, we're probably never going to know. But what it looks like to me, and this is just sheer speculation, is that the inner portion of this has recrystallized and as it cooled, the outer portion of it cooled down slow, uh, quicker and made this finer grain crust. Okay, and that would likely be the result of intense heat. Intense heat. Action. Okay, we've been coming here since the first time we started exploring this temple on our own, and the keepers would bring us in here and say, this is the real Holy of Holies. And the first thing we noticed is the destruction of this particular uh, uh, granite, or is it? I'm, no, sorry. It's a I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Diorite. Yeah. This particular rock, you can see its destruction. The 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 destructions from the inside out. And what is you know what would, what would cause something like that? So our theory was it was the energy of the site. But as we move in our, our research and our learning, we we think about all the different possibilities. Yes, maybe the energy that they, that they're harnessing a magnetic current here. But is there another event from above that connects and hits this? This is attracted to this magnetic energy that causes this explosion, and uh, uh, as Susan would just explain, could create something like this that we can't create today with our own technology.